Welcome back again to another episode of Big Red's Isopods. Uh, as promised last week, I do have something new this week to show you guys. But uh, before I do that, uh, we gotta go back and I gotta tell you guys a little bit of a story. So um, we're gonna take a look back at a couple weeks ago uh, when I uh, tried to shoot a video and it didn't go out so well. But um, since then I've got some stuff figured out and uh, uh, anyway, let's go take a look. Welcome back to another episode of Big Red Isopods. This week we're going to be showing you guys how to set up your own enclosure uh, using isopods from your own backyard or uh, somewhere nearby. Uh, so today I'm going to head on down to my dad's and we're going to grab some isopods there and then we're going to head on back home here and we're going to set up an enclosure for them. Alright, let's go. Now before I leave this, I just want to show you guys that it is possible to find isopods in and around your home. I'm going to be looking for a specific seed species today. This one here, the orange and brown one there, called Trilicupus rathka. I'm going to be trying to find some of those today. So that here is one of the isopods I'm going to be looking for. Alright everyone, we're about to leave my house here. I just wanted to talk to you guys real quick before I head on down to my dad's that uh, some of the isopods that we probably saw, I mean, looking at in my backyard there were probably some of the ones that I had originally uh, released from my, um, my first culture, my native culture that I had. Um, they could have been. Um, and then also the fact that Trilichilopus rathkai, which is extremely hard to uh, pronounce, as um, kind of an interesting isopod, I think, that I never really seen too terribly much before uh, getting involved with the um, the hobby. And I think it'd be something really interesting to bring in. And I just figured it'd be nice for uh, me to show you guys how a culture is put together in the first place. So here we go. Safety first. All right, guys. Here we are at my dad's. Uh, he's got a farm down here in uh, Ontario, uh, south of where I live. So we're gonna take a look for some isopods here. All right, guys, this is my dad's farm here. As you can see, he's got some chickens over there. He's got lots of land here, lots of property. So we're gonna take a look for some isopods. Some of the base, best places to look are under rocks like these here. They really seem to enjoy being around stones and rocks I'm gonna check here on this pond real quick might be some here might not a little spider I don't see any isopods here so we're gonna go check somewhere else so over here my dad's got a whole stack of rocks he bought we're gonna check in here and see if we can find any I like to hide in between these rocks turn around I know many species do some ants here Here's some isopods, but this is Priscillus spinocornis. It's not what we're looking for, so here we'll keep on looking. There we go. Move these rocks here, and uh, we got some. We got an Armadillinium vulgari. Check 
check underneath this stone. Uh, some more armadillidiums. Old berry right there. I'm gonna saw them. In right there in the dirt. I don't see any rathkai there. Check under this board here. Ah, uh, there's some more Armadillidium vulgari, which are extremely popular in northwestern or southwestern Ontario where I live. No, no Terechthipus rathka. A couple of center blocks over here. I'm gonna check under here as well. See what's under here? I see an earthworm, a couple earthworms. No isopods underneath here though. So my dad's got quite a few of these stones here by his garden. So we're going to take a look underneath some of them and see if we see any. I'll take a look. But no wrath cut. More ants. More ants. Hmm. Ants. It's beetles. Beatles. Also got these patio stones around this garden here. These are freshly placed, but they could have some ice spots underneath of them. So we're gonna take a look. Well, I found an interesting green beetle, but still no rathka. Take a look underneath this rock here. Nothing. Bulgari. Some more. All right, well, let's check underneath this old game piece of wood here. That's uh, prime isopod territory. Let's see any. See lots of different insects. Oh, isopod worm. Some more vulgari. Big centipede right there. But no Torlicky plus Rathkai. Uh, lots of slugs and other types of isopods here, but not what we're looking for. After searching and searching, I think I found two. So after a long day of searching and searching and coming up with nothing, I decided to return home in hopes to find some another day. So over the next couple of weeks, I searched around my yard and took a look to see if I could find anything. and. I slowly, day by day by day, gathered up more and more and more and to the point where I had enough that I think I could start a culture. It was unfortunate that I couldn't find any at my dad's, but um, apparently they're not as easy to find as I originally thought. But we got enough and you'll see what we did with them.
now you guys can see what I had planned uh, to be a simple and easy video about how to create your own uh, enclosure it ended up becoming <laughs> quite the uh, adventure, let's just say. Um, yeah, so um, I finally got enough gathered up. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna start a culture of these guys. So as you can see here guys, I already have one of my uh, old cultures that I've recycled the bin for. We're just gonna fill that one up with dirt there. We're just gonna take some of our, uh, our soil that we use for every other culture. I'm gonna place it in here. Now you don't want to pack down the dirt, but you don't want it to be too loose either. Gotta get a decent amount in there. And I don't believe these guys bury or burrow too much. I don't think they like to bury in themselves in the, the dirt. So I'm only gonna put a little bit in there. About an inch there of soil, and that should be good. Next, as per usual, we're gonna take some uh, dampened sphagnum moss here. Uh, that you can find at any pet store. We're gonna place it on the side without the hole, so the dry side of the container. Next, I'm gonna add a couple pieces of bark here that I've hand-picked out of my uh, bark bin. I'm gonna rip this so it's more closely to fitting the container. Then we're gonna grab dried leaves. And we're gonna fill up this side of the container. Now, the more leaves you add, just the more places they have to hide, which will make them feel more comfortable being in the container. You wanna make sure that nothing in there is gonna be sticking up too far for them to be able to climb out of the container. Not all isopods can climb, but these ones definitely can. And you wanna make sure that the leaves aren't touching the holes on the side, on either side as well, and they aren't anywhere near the top, and that'll look nice and neat there. Perfect for these isopods. Finally, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take the isopods I've collected and we're gonna dump them into this container to take a look at them and uh, make sure that we only get one species in here. Cause I know that I've accidentally collected more than one just by accident, not only that, but I might've seen some cool ones and thought maybe that they were the same species. But what I wanna do is I'm gonna carefully Shake off this moss. Oh, there's a little guy on my finger. Get down. Beautiful. Little bit at a time. I'm gonna put the moss back in the container so they know that only only have isopods in here. So that I can pick out the species that I want. Now you could potentially put multiple species in a container like you saw me do with my original culture. But over time, what's gonna happen is that one species is gonna become the dominant species and outcompete the other ones. Uh, in my case, it was actually, there was multiple species that were outcompeting each other and they were able to keep up with one another for the most part. It was the Armadillodium vulgari or Nasodum, whichever species it was as well as um, uh, Percelio Scaber. And there was a couple of these guys left over near the end, but I seen that they were having problems molting, probably due to lack of food, lack of um, calcium, proper amount of calcium, and uh, the constant comp competition between The constant competition between species probably caused them to um, not be as likely to get resources. Not only that, with such a few amount in there, they probably had troubles breeding properly. Not that I think these guys have, not that isopods that I know of have issues with inbreeding, but when there's only two in a container and they're constantly breeding, it, the genetic diversity is definitely not going to be where it should be. So again, all I'm doing is just gently shaking them off. They do have a hard exoskeleton. You can hear them hitting the bottom of the container, but it's not going to hurt them none. They'll be fine. All right. 
So here we have a whole bunch of isopods. Uh, I know the majority of these are the ones I was looking for. The Reticulus rathkai, which are the ones that are orange speckled that you can see all over the place here. But we also have some other species in here. I know that there is some um, uh, teardrop isopods in here. There's one up over there, crawling away, the darker one there. And there's a couple of those that I'm going to be putting back in the other container. There's another teardrop isopod here. I really wanted to go with these Rathkai because I've never seen them before in the culture and I think it'd be very neat for me to start a culture just primarily of these species. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take all these guys and we're gonna carefully dump them in our container. So, here, I'm just gonna gently knock down all the isopods so they're all in the bottom corner here. And we're just gonna carefully dump them in to their, their new enclosure. Let's take a look. Now, as you can see, there's a reason why I picked these, because of all their speculations. Speckles there, the speculations uh, all over the isopods where they're kind of like an orangish yellow color with the gray dots. I find them quite an interesting isopod. And I I suppose I could have checked to see if there was males and females in here. I'm just gonna move this bag of moss over to the left side over here carefully. Uh, I, I, I could have checked them out, but I didn't want to cause them too much. Um, too much stress. Uh, I wanted this transition to be relatively easy. I didn't want any chance of them dying, possibly from them being wild and being caught. But uh, I think they're really gonna like this enclosure that I've created for them. And uh, yeah, we'll take a look in a couple weeks and see if uh, they multiply. Thanks again for uh, coming to watch me on another episode of Big Red Ice, Big Red's Isopods, and uh, I hope you guys have a great week. We'll see you again next weekend. Um, yep, bye.